In our first story, Joy News has gathered the Social Security and National Insurance Trust would incur additional costs exceeding $4 million a year just to keep the controversial automation system, which has already cost the trust a whopping $147 million. The additional costs must be paid, although an audit of the system by the PricewaterhouseCoopers revealed several defects and instances of double payment for aspects of the software infrastructure. Here's a news desk report. A copy of the executive summary of the audit secured by Joy News revealed what auditors describe as unavoidable, variable and intangible costs associated with the automation system. Total service related costs alone that must be paid every year amounts to four point three million dollars. This is despite of the fact that the total contract sum has already ballooned from thirty eight million dollars to a jaw-dropping $147 million. The report also found out that the OBS project faces significant challenges as a result of inadequate project governance and management. It also found instances where payments were made more than once for the same item, while service-level agreement payments also made in advance when items were yet to be delivered. The audit also indicted the former management of SNIT, led by Ernest Thompson, for failing to disclose the full extent of issues relating to the automation project to the board. In fact, the audit team found that one point management presented to the board, the ICT initiatives were ongoing, even though there were significant functional challenges with the OBS. The board itself, led by the NDC presidential hopeful, Joshua Alabi, was also questioned for failing to demand accountability for management when there were issues of overspending and poor project management were brought to its attention. Additionally, the audits revealed how the former state management signed up the entire project as having been delivered when at that time the project itself was not fully implemented. In fact, the auditors recommended that SNATE may have to reconsider replacing the entire pension administration solution together with relevant marching hardware due to the fact that there's potential significant cost may be incurred without the commensurate benefits. Well, my colleague Daniel Dadzi was given a tour of the IT infrastructure in question. Staff showed him the defects in the system. So what are we doing now? We are generating a payment advice. What's a payment advice? It's an advice showing the total indebtedness of an employer. Okay, that is uh, if the employer has not paid some contributions. Yes. And if he owes some penalties as well. That is it. So the payment advice will tell you the various month, you see, it will indicate the various month that payment has not been made. It will also indicate the, the number of workers, the labor force, the, and the amount per each month. Okay. So when you sum everything together, that is the payment advice. Okay, so let's so, see that work here. So that is the payment advice we are generating. The employer came, wanted to know his penalty indebtedness. Then it was printed for the employer. Then some few minutes later, the same advice was printed again. And from these two advice, that was printed within an interval of less than three minutes. No, it's a minute. Minute, even minute. You see different penalties recorded on the payment advice. Mm. One is saying that the penalty is 523.60. The other is saying the penalty is 441.86. However, the actual contribution remains the same. Mm -hmm. So once the actual contribution remains the same, we expect that the penalty should remain the same. Okay. On the same day. Mm -hmm.